Welcome to Kendall Kids at Home. Do you remember our story from last week? It was all about a man called Stephen, who bravely told the Jewish leaders the truth about Jesus. But this made them so angry that they killed him. The Jewish leaders then started persecuting the other Christians to try and stop them from spreading the good news about Jesus. But the exact opposite happened. Followers of Jesus left Jerusalem and scattered all over the place, spreading the good news about Jesus wherever they went. I wonder, have you ever read something, maybe some instructions or a big science book or a book in a different language? Um, and you could read the words, but you couldn't understand anything that the book was trying to say. Well, in today's story from Acts, we hear about a man who just couldn't understand what he was reading. He understood the words, but he didn't know what they meant. He needed someone to help him understand it. Now, our story today comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 1 to 8 and verses 26 to 40. A man named Saul was one of the Jewish leaders who persecuted Christians. He even went from house to house and dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Soon, many Christians began to leave Jerusalem and move to other places. It was sad that they had to leave Jerusalem, but the good thing was that wherever the Christians went, they preached about Jesus. And because of that, many more people heard the good news. One of the Christians preaching about Jesus was named Philip. He was a man who was wise and lived according to the Holy Spirit. Philip travelled to Samaria and he told the people there all about Jesus. He also did many miracles and he healed lots of people. One day, an angel of God came to Philip and gave him some special instructions to go to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip knew that angels were servants of God and that they sometimes delivered messages from him. So he did just as the angel directed. When he arrived at the road, Philip looked up and saw an important looking man in a chariot. Now the man was from Ethiopia and was an important official in charge of all of the Queen's treasures. He was on his way back home after going to Jerusalem to worship. The man was reading from a scroll that contained the writings of the prophet Isaiah. He was reading about a lamb that was sacrificed, but he did not know what that meant. The Holy Spirit of God told Philip to go up to the chariot, so Philip ran up to it. Philip asked the Ethiopian, Do you understand what you are reading? Now sometimes it's difficult to understand what we're reading in the Word of God. Sometimes we need help from people who understand the Bible better than we do. The man had many questions and asked Philip to help him understand. The Ethiopian showed Philip the scripture he was reading and Philip began to explain it to him. Then Philip went on to tell him more and more about Jesus so that the man could understand that Jesus was really the Lamb of God. The man must have thought, oh, I see now, I understand what Isaiah was talking about. The Ethiopian was so happy to hear the good news of Jesus. Now the Ethiopian was really excited. He wanted to have his sins forgiven so that he could be a follower of Jesus. When the chariot passed near some water, the Ethiopian said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptised? The Ethiopian ordered the chariot to stop and both he and Philip went down into the water so that Philip could baptise him. 
As soon as they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. He later appeared in another town and went on teaching many other people about Jesus. Even though the Ethiopian man never saw Philip again, the Bible says that he went on his way rejoicing. He was now a Christian and his life would never be the same. Let's see how much you can remember from the story. Where was the man in the chariot from? What was he reading? Who helped him understand it? Philip helped the Ethiopian man to understand the scriptures. But when you have questions about what you're reading in the Bible, who can you ask to help you understand it? Maybe your parents or whoever you live with. Maybe your grandparents or your Sunday school teacher. Maybe you could even ask an older brother or sister. But what about if one of your friends has questions about God or something in the Bible? Would you be able to help your friend understand the good news about Jesus? Today, we're going to see one way that you could share the gospel with your friends. I know some of you will have seen this before, but it's always a good reminder to see it again. You're going to need five different colours to help you tell the story. You're going to need gold, black, red, white and green. You might want to make one of these books or you could um, have a bracelet with some beads on it or you could even paint your nails with the right colour. Today I'm going to tell the story using this special bag. The colour gold reminds us of heaven and in the Bible we are told that in heaven the streets are paved with gold. We're also told there is no sickness or pain. But the most wonderful thing about heaven is that is where God lives. It's God's home. Now God loves each one of us and wants to be with us. But there is one problem. This darkness represents the dark things that come from sin. And sin is the wrong things that we say, the wrong things that we do and the wrong things that we think. All of us have messed up. And we've turned away from God. And because of this, we can't be with God because God is perfect. He's perfectly good and perfectly clean. We can only be with God if we have clean hearts. But we can't do that by ourselves. So God made a plan. Red represents the blood of Jesus. And it's the only way that our hearts can be made clean. God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to earth. Jesus was different from any other person because he never did anything that was wrong. He is perfect just like God his father. Instead of us being punished for our sin, Jesus died on the cross so that all the wrong things that we have done can be forgiven. And on the third day, Jesus came back to life again. When Jesus took the punishment for our sins, something amazing happened. The amazing thing is that our hearts can now be made clean or as white as snow. But before our hearts can be made clean, we need to do three things. Admit that we have sinned and ask God to forgive us. We need to believe that Jesus died on the cross to be punished instead of us and ask Jesus into our lives to help us turn away from sin. And when we do these things sincerely, our hearts will be made clean. But that's not the end of the story. The colour green reminds us of all the things that grow, don't they? Like grass, leaves and trees. And once we've asked Jesus into our life, it's really important that we grow in our relationship with Jesus and also grow to become more like him. We can do this by praying, 
which is talking to God, by reading the Bible and also obeying him. Why don't you have a go now at telling someone the good news about Jesus and how to become a Christian using these five colours? Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for our amazing story today about Philip and the Ethiopian man. We thank you that because Philip told him about Jesus, the man became a Christian and asked to be baptised. Help us to be bold like Philip and tell others about Jesus. Please give us the right words to say that we can help people understand the good news message. Amen. This week, why don't you have a go at either making a little book like this or a bracelet with some different coloured beads um, with the five colours and practice saying uh, what each of the colours means so that if you ever get the opportunity to tell one of your friends about Jesus, you'll know exactly what to say. This week, you could also pray for a friend or a family member who doesn't know about Jesus yet. Well, that's the end for this week. And next week, we will be hearing another amazing story from the Book of Acts. Bye.